you are about to enter the strange world of Mr. Davis. Story 1. Elevator Apparition This takes place a while back, maybe three years ago. I was living in a really old apartment complex in New York. It had one of those elevators with the metal grate doors. I hope that makes sense, as I can't really think of a better way to describe it. Just know that you could see through the grate pretty well. I was taking it down a few floors so I could leave and head into work. I lived on the fifth floor, and there were twelve in the building. For a quick second, I thought I heard someone say something. It was quick, like a little, Hey! And then it was gone. Now, I was the only one in the elevator, so I thought it was someone on a passing floor. I looked up from my phone, only to see that the elevator had stopped in between floors three and two. I was staring straight into a blank wall, and no one was around me. This was my literal worst nightmare. It was basically pitch black, with only a small sliver of light coming in from the floor above. I pressed the emergency button in hopes of getting in touch with someone, but I guess it didn't work because no one ever responded. I started yelling up to the third floor. Hey, can you hear me? The elevator's stuck. I banged on the grate and made as much noise as I possibly could, but no one was answering me. I was starting to sweat and I could feel my heart rate rising rapidly. That's when I heard it again. That little, hey. But this time it came from behind me. I spun around and pressed my back against the wall. I needed to be able to see every inch of this elevator. Help! I called out. I'm stuck in here! I couldn't breathe correctly, I was so terrified. What happened next is what I hate talking about the most. A cloud of what I thought was smoke at first began to build up in the corner opposite of me. Great, now it's on fire, I thought. But it wasn't smoke. It lingered just above the floor and right below the ceiling. Slowly, it started swirling in on itself until finally it formed the rough outline of a man. The ceilings in the elevator were about seven feet tall and this figure was nearly grazing it. My eyes grew wide, my legs gave out, and I fell to the floor. I tried in vain to push myself away from it, only to ram myself against the wall again and again. And then... <sighs> It wasn't raspy or high-pitched like before. This time it sounded evil. It was guttural and absolutely horrifying. I screamed at the top of my lungs and by some miracle, the elevator came back to life with a loud clang and made its way down the rest of the shaft, eventually stopping on the ground floor. There were a handful of folks hanging around on the ground floor just talking and going on, but I disregarded them. Apparently they hadn't heard me either. I stepped out and lit up a cigarette trying to calm my nerves. It worked as about as well as you would expect. I'm not sure what the hell that thing in the elevator was and why I only saw it once. I'd lived there for almost four years. Either way, I'm glad I haven't seen it again. Story 2 The Lake House I was on vacation, totally alone at my lake house when this story takes place. I opened with this as a way to hopefully ward off comments about why I didn't call for help. My cell got barely any reception out there and I hadn't taken the time to get the phone working. I know it was stupid, but I would never expected something like this to happen. It was my third day down there and I was drinking a beer on the pier and soaking up some midnight rays when I noticed two glowing red eyes floating over the top of the lake. Not on the other side where the bank is, mind you, but over the lake. I could see the reflection of them on the water. Whatever it was, it was fast. It would travel from one side of the lake to the other, and this lake was a few miles wide. It kicked up water as it went as well. It did its rounds about seven or eight times before it just stopped, right in the middle of the lake. Then it seemed to descend into the water and disappear. Maybe I've had too much to drink, I thought, and headed back to the house for some much needed rest. I convinced myself it was nothing and slept like a baby. 
At morning around 8, I headed back to the pier to do a little fishing. I was catching them left and right for a while. It was awesome. I had the ideal of grilling out after a few drinks, but the thought was quickly pushed to the back of my mind. I just dropped another fish into the barrel and lit a cigarette when I heard that splashing again. The same one I'd heard the night before. I quickly turned around and was met with those same red eyes traveling back and forth from one end of the lake to the other. I stood right at the edge of the pier, squinting my eyes, trying to make out what it could be. All I could see was the top of what I assumed was its head and those glowing red eyes. Even in the sun, they still glowed. Just as quick as it had started, it stopped. It brought itself to the center of the lake again and slowly descended. The fish quit biting after that. That was fine with me. I had plenty to eat and I didn't really want to be out there anymore. This wasn't just some weird thing I saw when I was drunk anymore. I was completely sober this time. The next day followed a similar sequence of events. I would see this thing swim for about 20 minutes until finally giving up and going under again. It never got closer and didn't really seem threatening. Of course, it was unsettling as hell, but that was it. It wasn't until my final night at the lake house that shit really hit the fan. I was woken up by the sound of, and I apologize for the visual, someone licking their lips right next to my ear. Of course, I sprung out of bed to see what the hell it was, but I didn't see anything at first. No, the first thing I noticed was the smell of rotten fish. I nearly vomited on the floor, but was able to hold it back. Walking back over to my bed, I noticed something that made goosebumps rise all over my body. The side I wasn't sleeping on was covered in a disgusting and vile lake water. My sheets were stained green by it. Then that disgusting wet sound returned. This time it was coming from the kitchen. I grabbed my rifle from the closet and made sure it was loaded and headed out. I knew whatever I'd seen in the lake was in this house and I had no choice but to fight it. I walked through the living room trying to stay quiet. Keeping the rifle at the ready, I came to the doorway of the kitchen. The stench of rotting fish was invading my nostrils, but I fought off the one to gag because when I turned the corner into the kitchen, I was met with a terrifying sight. First all I saw was the back of it. It was all black with a large fin down its entire spine. It was hunched over the bucketed scraps I'd yet to thrown out. I could hear that wet sound once again, only now I could put an image to it. There were guts and fish blood all over the floor. The crunching of bones and scales was too much. It had the same body type of a human, two arms and legs, but its feet and hands were webbed and the head was elongated with another large fin on top. I stepped a little closer to this thing trying to hold my hand steady to get a shot on it. I was maybe two feet away when all of a sudden it dropped the carcass and turned its attention towards me. It was slow in its movements, but deliberate. It knew what it wanted, and it was about to get it. The eyes were just as red as I had expected. They were piercing, even. As soon as I thought it was going to stand or pounce, I fired off one shot. It connected, luckily, and the creature cried out in pain and started to make its way toward the door. I was immobilized. I hadn't fired a rifle in so long, the blast put me on my ass with my ears ringing. Once I'd got up, the creature was gone. A trail of black slime went from the kitchen towards the backyard. I regained my bearings and headed out. The creature had made it to the pier, but seemed to not be moving. I approached it slowly with the rifle again at the ready. My shoulder was on fire, but the ringing in my ears faded. I could hear short, labored breaths. I didn't want this thing to go back into the water. I lit up one more shot, and this time towards the head. The breathing stopped, and its red eyes faded. I doubted they knew what this was, and I was right. They showed up, tried examining it, but eventually gave up and stepped off to the side to make a phone call. Soon after that, a large black SUV pulled up. Two very well-dressed men stepped out and walked over. They were both about six foot five, heavy built in the muscular sense, and spoke in a very monotone way. They looked over it and took some pictures and wrote notes. 
Once they were done, the two guys from the wildlife preserve put it in what seemed to be a body bag and threw it in the back of the SUV. While this was happening to me, the two men spoke. What you've done here today was very brave and admirable. However, you need to understand that none of it happened. Do you understand? I nodded my head. His partner went and got a contract from the SUV and demanded I sign it. I'm fairly certain that this post voids anything I agreed to, and I have no clue what the repercussions will be, but I needed to get this out there. There are some terrifying things living right under our noses that someone, whether you call it aliens or Big Brother, doesn't want us to know about. Story 3. Construction Site A few years back, a friend and I had this really awesome hangout spot in our town. While most people hang out at their respective houses, we took a late night refuge in an abandoned construction site. It was an awesome place to hang out. The machinery was still there, left to rot by whatever company had given up on their project. There were a ton of fun things to do, but the one thing we always found ourselves doing was hanging out at the crater. We called it that because it was just that, a crater. I'd say it was about 100 feet wide, but only about 3 feet deep. The drop wasn't even steep either. You could take a leisurely pace down into it and never notice you were in it. We'd been hanging at this spot for about three months without ever having something happen. Whether it was someone running us off or something weird happening, we'd never encountered either. Hell, thinking about it, we never even saw any stray animals running around. I suppose because of this fact is why the one event that took place is so memorable. It started like any other night. We'd been lying down in the crater, staring up at the sky when my friend asked me something. Are there just no cars on the road tonight? He said. What do you mean? As I finished my sentence, I noticed what he was talking about. It was totally quiet out here. Now, the site was next to a busy road, and it was only 8 o'clock. I stood up and walked up the crater to look for myself. Dude, I said. The road is just as busy as ever. I heard him stand up and soon he was right behind me. Okay, that is fucking weird. We couldn't wrap our heads around the fact that we were looking at the road, but the cars weren't making any noise. But then we did hear something. There was a low hum coming from behind us. We turned around for a moment. I didn't see anything. That was until my friend nudged me and pointed to the sky. Dude, please tell me you see that. I looked up and saw exactly what he wanted me to. There was a large part of the sky that seemed to be blacked out. There were stars everywhere in the sky except for that spot right in the middle. The hum grew louder and soon I noticed that the shape was descending. We stepped back a few feet and just stared in awe. Eventually the black saucer settled in the very crater we'd just been hanging out in. We couldn't move. Small lights started appearing all over the craft and the humming came to a stop. The top of it opened like the cockpit. The top lifted up and a tall, skinny gray alien stepped out. It was here that we decided it was time to get the hell out of there. We hopped on our bikes and pedaled down the sidewalk as fast as we could. Back home we talked about it for a bit. Dude, my friend said, that was a fucking alien. I didn't want to believe it, but there really wasn't a better explanation. Neither one of us were on drugs, and what about that weird silence? Was anyone else affected by it? We debated on what to do until finally deciding it was best to keep it to ourselves. We lived in a small town. If anyone else would have seen it, they could have spoken up about it. The following day, we visited the construction site once again, curious as to whether there was something left there from last night. To our surprise, an 8 foot tall fence with black wrapping was put up. Tons of no trespassing and property of Aberdeen County have been posted as well. I spoke to someone who seemed to be on their lunch break and he explained that some no name company purchased the plot with the hope of building something in there. Now that some time had passed, I felt safer talking about it. Honestly, nothing ever came up about it from other people. News outlets never covered it, it was never mentioned anywhere. The reason I feel fine talking about it now is because I visited that site recently. 
The fence no longer has that black wrapping and the signs have been taken down. The heavy machinery has also been removed. There was nothing in there, just an empty plot of land. I don't know what no-name company bought this plot of land, but I can't help but think that there was something more going on. Someone, a higher up in the military or government, had seen what we did. They noticed this strange silence and reported it. Now it seems they've destroyed any evidence of it ever happening. All except this post. I know no one is going to report on it even if they have footage or testimonials. The news stations have probably been paid them off to ignore everything. All footage that may have existed on the internet would also be eradicated. The FBI already watches us as it is, and it's not that far-fetched that they've removed any evidence. Whether or not this post stay alive, just remember that something visited Aberdeen, North Carolina all those years ago. Story 4 Drunk Hallucinations or More The other night was my 21st birthday. As most do, I spent all day celebrating. Me and my friends spent a good part of our evening bar hopping and going to strip clubs. By the end of it, I was completely hammered. One of the bouncers called us a cab, and if the driver of that is reading this, I apologize for ruining your back seat. And we all crashed at my house since it was the closest. Once home, my two friends passed out in the living room, but I wanted to try and sober up a little bit. I started up the shower, let the steam fill the bathroom, and made a makeshift sauna. There was a little more vomiting, luckily in the toilet this time, but soon I was in the shower. The water wasn't really hot anymore, but the briskness was welcome. It really woke me up some. When I turned to get out though, I noticed a large shadow being cast across the shower curtain in the shape of a man. I thought maybe one of my friends wanted to scare me, so I just called out, Get out of here, man. I have to get dressed. The water had still been running pretty hard. Maybe he didn't hear me, I thought. I switched it off and called out again. Dude, I've got to get dressed. Just get out. The shadow stayed where it was. I was getting fed up at this point. Alright, if you want to see my ass, then so be it. Then I reached for the shower curtain, making sure my fingers would be seen from the other side. I held them there, thinking that if he saw them, he'd know that I wasn't joking. Come on, man, this isn't even funny. I waited one more time for a response, and while there were no words spoken, I got what I asked for. There was a very deep, heavy breathing coming from the other side of the curtain. I pulled my hand away. I didn't want to open it anymore. The figure was still not moving, but the volume of its breathing had increased so much that the shoulders of it were rising up and down. I didn't know what to do. I was so scared about what stood there on the other side of that curtain, but I also didn't want to stand there freezing my ass off. I worked up as much courage as I could and grabbed the curtain one more time. The breathing continued to intensify with each second that passed. Finally, I threw back the curtain and was met with my empty bathroom. The figure was gone, and the breathing stopped. I'm not sure what was standing outside my shower. I've never seen anything like it again, and I really hope I never do. And real quick for the record, I did check to see if my friends could have played a prank, but when I went into the living room, they were in the same position they were when we got there. On top of that, I never heard the bathroom door open, and there was no way they could make it out fast enough and not have it being obvious. Finally, if it were one of them, they would have done something much worse than stand there. It's really strange. Do these things tend to happen to people once and then never again? <laughs>